Hey guys, Philosopher here, and today I'm talking about the New Tech Raid Team, the Bionic Avengers. I will give Scopely credit for this. They've actually made a Scourge team, a team that we already want to build up. They've told us in advance that this will be one of the teams for the Death Scourge event, which I think is the fourth horseman. So kudos to them for that. Uh, given all the sustainability on this team, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the team that you have to max out. Uh, um, but maybe not. I don't know, because obviously this is a team that many of us are going to want to max out uh, or do as much as we can anyways, because it's a raid team. And I know a lot of folks have been waiting to get a raid team, tech raid team, for quite some time. And here's the good news, or bad news, as the case may be. This team looks totally OP, and it actually looks like a team that is sort of tailor-made for the raid sim. Like, I think it will sim very well, <clears throat> which... Um, you know, I think is going to obviously give folks an incentive to build this team. I think the bad news is you kind of have to get the shards to build this team. <laughs> I mean, many of you are going to do that anyways, but if you thought, oh man, I'm, I need to focus my training mats elsewhere. Uh, well, uh, you're going to have to focus on the bionic Avengers. I think everyone's going to be building this team. This is probably going to be as close to a must build team as you need, uh, because you know, you're going to need this tech raid team at some point, And most of us, uh, you know, are just cobbling together a tech raid solution involving Kestrel, uh, Doom, and just a bunch of random stuff, right? So uh, there's two team, there's two characters that we all pretty much have to some extent, right? Here, I think Iron Man and Vision. If you're a newer player, you may not have bothered with Vision, but at least he's, uh, you know, he's farmable and has been farmable for quite some time, right? He's, you know, at, at an early note, it's not like you're going to have to work your way through the Doom War campaign to get him. Iron Man, super easy character to get. Easiest legendary to get by far. And it's good to finally see him useful. He has not been useful at all <clears throat> during my entire time playing MSF, which is a long time now, since March of 2020. So well over two years, he's been completely useless. <clears throat> but it's not going to surprise you to learn that the characters that are really worth their salt here, the ones that get it all going, are the new characters, right? Of course, particularly, I think, Hulkbuster and Viv Vision. I'm going to get to why. Uh, so the Hulkbuster, I think, is an interesting choice that they did not make this a part of the Iron Man character. I kind of thought that maybe when Iron Man got a rework, it would be that if a full team was there, that he would kind of like how Thanos, when he gets in power, gets a whole new kit. I thought you might see Hulk turn, turn into the Hulkbuster, get a whole new kit. Hulk, I'm sorry. Iron Man get a, turn into the Hulkbuster and get a whole new kit if you had the full team. Uh, here we've kind of have uh, two basically Iron Man and Hulkbuster working together. I suppose someone else could be in one of those pieces of armor or it could just be floating on its own like it does in the movies sometimes where was it Iron Man 3 when Tony Stark had all sorts of different uh, suits that were flying on their own. Uh, but definitely uh, going more towards the um, the root of having multiple characters in the game for a single uh, hero. Uh, I think uh, we may get to a point where we have, you know, we already have two Spider-Men. Uh, we already have two. Uh, we have Falcon uh and we, you know, we have uh, Captain Sam and Falcon. Uh, now we have uh, two, essentially two Tony Starks in the game. So this is going to be a tank, not surprising. But I think what's very interesting here, I'm going to go right to the passive. Is if you look here, when this character or Bionic Avenger, which is the name of this new team, when this character or a Bionic Avenger ally gains ability energy, fill speed bar by 5% for this character. This is totally busted because this entire team is built around feeding ability energy. As you're gonna see, as we go through these kits, basically multiple characters in the team are just feeding every time in their turn, they're feeding ability energy to either adjacent allies or to the entire team. And so um, this is a team that every time a character gets ability energy, they're gonna get 5% speed bar, and then from Viv Vision, they're gonna also be getting um, heals. Uh, so I just think this is pretty, actually the entire team gets healed. So I, I just think this is going to be insane. And this is why, by the way, that I think that this is a team that's going to do well in auto. Because <laughs> I think this is a team that even when you have it in sim, the sim mode, this team is just going to be feeding itself tons of ability energy. And there's kind of some smart ability energy regeneration here. And then it's also going to be, you know, doing, you know, filling speed bar and so on. There's a lot of kind of stuff that really is going to be very AI friendly in these kits. <laughs> so, um, 
so anyway, so in one, you know, one, I will say somebody in my chat's already mentioned to me that the Hulkbuster supposedly has been deployed remotely, which explains why he's separate from Iron Man. So there you go. And there's our our uh, our in universe explanation for this. All right. So 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 this, like I said, probably the most OP line in all of the kits speed. This is the name. The speed is the name of the game here. Um, you know, it's a turn based game. So if you take more turns, you're going to win you. If if, for example, if uh, you have two characters that are low health and my team goes first, I will kill the opposing character that has low health. Uh, whereas if the other guy goes first, they can heal that character up. Right. It, it, it can you know, change the entire outcome of a battle. When Iron Man drops below 50 percent health gain taunt. This is a, a, a care, one of those characters that kind of has an auto taunt component. And then when he drops below 50% max health, it clears taunt and applies offense down for two turns to all enemies, which is very powerful. 50% less damage from opponents. And then on spawn, burying the entire team for 30% of this character's max health, which is huge. Uh, gives you an incentive to have a huge Hulkbuster. And then in same, he barriers the, the allies for, the, for 30% of his max health. Puts health on the entire team. And then look, at he's going to be using his ultimate quite a bit. Uh, because he's going to be getting a lot of ability energy, as is the entire team. And that's going to be putting slow for two turns on the entire team. That's 50% less. Speed bar generation, very important in a turn-based game. Then barriering the entire team and generating ability energy for adjacent allies and speed up to the whole uh, team, which is just super powerful. You know, hit, what speed up means his team's getting get speed bar 50% faster. Slow means the enemy gets 50% slower. Uh, speed generation so or turn bar generation so uh, a sp there between that and this ability right here a huge speed advantage for the team this is this character is doing a lot of the work you're not going to be able to skip this character and have the same level of performance with this team this team really needs this character uh, alive to function well on his first turn though I do expect him to be using this special which means that he's going to gain taunt for two turns apply offense down for two turns to primary and adjacent Clear all negative effects from himself and then barrier the, the all allies. And then generating ability energy for two random Bionic Avengers, or excuse me, in raids for the entire Bionic Avenger team. So what, what, once again, that's going to mean each character gets 5% speed bar. And then according to the Viv Vision kit, which we'll get to in a minute, that's going to be, I think, 15% healing for the whole team if it, re if it works as it reads. And then on his basic, he's going to be barrying bury, barriering the entire team. And if this character has more has barrier, which is often going to be the case, he's going to be getting defense up for two turns and deflect for two turns, and an assist from Iron Man. I mean, what a what an insane basic, right? I have not seen barriering the entire team on a basic before. Very interesting. We'll see what the ISO attack looks like. This is a a, a character that you might want to have, uh, uh, for example. Uh, as a striker in raids just to get extra barrier for the whole team. We'll see. I, I will say, though, with getting barrier on the entire team from special and barrier on the entire team on the ultimate, with the barrier on passive, you, this team may be capped out on barrier, which is, I think, 30% of a character's max health anyway. <clears throat> All right, Iron Man gets huge stat increases. Now his kit is also brought up to par with some of the newer kits. Still nowhere near as good as the two new the three new characters in the team but still nice uh, now his his main attacks can apply defense down and chain to two adjacent targets apply defense down like i said more of a modern kit gaining an assist from hulkbuster uh, which is very nice um the the new special is going to prolong the duration of all negative effects by one on all targets all enemies and in rage generating ability energy for adjacent allies like i said what this this uh this team is all about uh it also takes out the the additional damage that you used to get if you had captain america on the team because they want you to use it with him with the bionic avengers and then the ultimate single target attack very you know higher damage but then generating ability energy for two random allies and then in raids for all allies so that's really huge um generating ability energy for an entire team in most teams, that would be like an amazing, you know, energy battery. Uh, but for this team, that's just kind of how the entire team functions. And then on his passive, lots of crit chance and damage for this team, suggesting to me that, you you know, you will have a lot of raiders on this team. 
unless you specifically have a need, for example, to have a striker for an ISO attack, you're going to be using Raider. <coughs> Vision, like I said, uh, older character used to be a very OP character when I started playing a couple years ago, one of the best characters in the game. Uh, you know, that is, you know, obviously he's, you know, he's been out of the meta for quite some time, but he's definitely getting the stat increases. And then now um, on his, his basic, he is not only going to be putting offense down uh, to three targets, but uh, he's going to be, in, in, you know, applying bleed to tech enemies, but he's also getting an assist from Vivision. This was already always a pretty good basic. And so now it's, you know, it's, it's held up fairly well. So they just, uh, I think increased this slightly. The special um, now applying ability block to a primary target and uh, Jason target, as it always did, well, used to be super powerful ability, um, but st and then a ability block for two turns at the target's tech. And then, and here's the key thing, generating ability energy for a random bionic Avenger ally. That was not f at full energy at the start of the turn. I do think that one thing's going to happen a lot with this team is you're just going to get capped all the time, particularly characters in the middle, right? So you're going to have five characters. The two that are on the sides won't be adjacent to, they'll only be adjacent to one ally, but the ones in the middle are going to be adjacent to two, and they're going to be getting a lot of ability energy. So I could see characters getting capped out. Uh, you know, uh, at some point, particularly if they're taking a lot of turns, there's certain uh, allies are taking a lot of turns. So this is kind of smart ability generation to smooth that out and then generating ability energy for Viv Vision, which is one of the new characters. And then on the ultimate clearing two positive effects for all on all enemies, applying bleed, which is very nice. And then in raids, reduce speed bar by 30 percent for all enemies. Wow, that's huge uh, in raid and. Uh, one ability energy for adjacent bionic adventure allies so that that's really nice and then he always applied uh defense up for two turns to all tech allies on spawn that's why for a while he was in power armor now ian raids apply immunity for two turns to the entire team and then when viv vision drops below 50 percent health apply death proof to her and then on her if she gets ability blocked clear all negative effects on that character so basically as long as he's alive viv vision is immune to ability block effectively and then he puts focus on the entire team, which is very nice. So a good character definitely upgraded his kit, which is already not that awful. Uh, already, you know, of halfway decent uh, to make it more of a modern kit. But the, but the real star in this group is Hulkbuster. And then in the part two, which came out more recently, um, we've got the two new characters, which are uh, you see Viv Vision there and Deathlock. So Deathlock um is yet another you know hero tech here and he is got some in, insane stuff first of all on turn he gains 15 percent damage and puts additional 15 percent damage on the whole team up to a max of 45 which is nice that's he's another character you're going to just ha have to have on the team if you don't want to give up 45 percent damage so just another kind of force you to build a new character and then in raids when this character or an or a bionic and adventure ally gains ability energy which is all the time as you're starting to see gains plus one charge up to a maximum of five and then if he has five charges he attacks the most injured enemy for 300 percent damage and loses five charges so it's it's very much like how you have um uh kestrel uh, doing a ping or gambit doing a ping uh black bolt at times doing ping he's gonna have his own ping which is going to happen pretty often because the you know when bionic avengers are getting ability energy it's just going to feed charges to him and he's going to be pinging all the time not quite as much as gambit but quite a bit all right let's look at his uh ultimate this is a turn two ability although he'll probably be using it a ton because of all the ability energy going out there he attacks primary and adjacent targets for 450 percent if they're tech 500 percent, and then ability applying ability block to the primary target maybe for two turns of its tech and then a, a one ability energy for all adjacent and then special turn one offense up for two turns to the entire team which is huge as 50 percent more damage for the team tech all enemies for 300 percent damage and apply to bleed <clears throat> this means you might want to have him as a striker more on that in a minute generate one ability energy for all adjacent uh allies which is nice and then look at this basic <clears throat> look at this basic uh, his basic attack primary target for 200% damage and then three more bonus attacks. So a total of four attacks. And it's going to be, you know, 500% damage. But here's the thing. In raids, if he has full energy and crits on any of these attacks, 
and he's going to get that extra crit chance, remember from Iron Man, generate ability energy for up to two Bionic Avenger allies who are not at full energy at the start of this turn. So I think the real question here is, do you want to have him a Raider to make sure he's critting more? Or do you just take that extra crit chance from Iron Man and have him as Striker so you have ISO attacks? Because this attack could generate up to four ability energy. I don't think, recall, we've ever had an ISO attack generating ability energy that I can remember. I mean, this is so OP on a basic. Um, so I think he's one character you may end up having as a striker on this team just to have additional chances to generate all this ability energy, which, of course, feeds turn meter. Um, and then we'll see in a moment healing to the team. So very OP character. Uh, for in the context of this team only obviously okay these are not great standalone characters these these characters are very much like we've seen from scopely recently trying to force you to build the whole team and have the whole team and use the whole team together all right viv vision some sort of like a uh, girl created by vision uh, make a family or whatever another hero tech character but here you go let's take a look at the at the passive here and this is insane whenever anybody on the team the bionic adventure team gets ability energy she heals the entire team for 3% of the character's max health. So having a bigger Viv Vision means you're going to get more healing, but the bottom line is she's going to be healing constantly. Whenever anybody gets ability energy, she heals the entire team. So between that and the turn meter gain, I mean, this team's insane, and this is why I say that this team's going to be really great when you sim the team, when you auto. Uh, this team is just going to be healing and gaining turn meter like crazy. So it really seems to make the kind of team that can be a just set and forget kind of team, which is really nice for raids. Um, and then when this character or any character drops with 50% max health for the first time in the battle, it clears disrupted heal block and applies stealth to that character. So then she can heal it up, which is very nice. And oh yeah, in raids generate an ability energy for that character so that, you know, everyone gets a 3% heal and that character gets a speed bar and everything else. She, and she puts armor on the team. And if you look at her ultimate turn one ability flips all negative effects to positive effects for the team, which is awesome. This is just this, by the way, just makes her kind of a nice, you know, kind of plug and play cleanser. But this is really what she does in the whole team. All negative to positive effects flipped. And then she attacks primary target and all enemies on the row. So either the front row or the back row and applies blind, which basically unless the you know, they're using an unavoidable attack or something. This is um, or, or it's one of those rare characters that has extra accuracy, uh, like a daredevil or something. This is. You know, this is basically going to have 100% damage mitigation from that row. So that could be very nice in raids where you've got a ton of uh, enemies stacked up in a row. Like, you know, say, you know, 10 enemies in the field, or uh, that sort of thing. And one ability energy for the entire team. We already saw that gives turn meter to the whole team. That heals the whole, that'll, this would heal if they, uh, unless they're filled, filled up. If it actually generates the ability energy, this would be 15% healing for the whole team. <clears throat> very nice, right? And, oh, yeah, unavoidable. By the way, unavoidable blind. So that's basically like uh, Magneto. Like that's that's the big Magneto ability. Well, she's got that turn one. And then special, um, she's going to apply also a turn one ability offense down for two turns and ability block for two turns. Two turn ability block on turn one. <laughs> and then generating ability energy for two random allies that were not at full energy. Once again, a smart en energy generation, which is very nice. And then in raids on kill, apply off and sound for two turns and ability block for two turns to all adjacent enemies, which is basically going to give you the bonus for controlling the team. If you control the team, you'll be able to pick off some some character that's at low health and you'll put ability blocks on adjacent, which, which is nice. And then look at her basic here. Applying deflex to the most injured ally to up to two deflex and in. If the if she's on a full bionic adventure team, it'll be put two deflex on it on the most injured ally on her basic, and then generating two ability energy for a random ally that was not a full energy, and an ability energy for vision, and an assist from vision. However, it's not going to generate ability energy for the what this is basically for the ISO attack, and so that suggests to me that if you're going to have a striker on this team, it may end up being Deathlock for his ability regeneration. Very very interesting. I mean, the bottom line here is this looks like an OP team. It's going to be the New Tech Raid team. It's going to be OP. They say it's, it's required for Scourge. And frankly, it looks like while it won't be quite as good, it still should be pretty decent, have a good amount of sustain outside of, um, outside of Raid. This seems like a must build for everyone, and I think this is where folks are going to be putting their training mats and gold going forward. All right, guys, if you like this video, smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. If you got comments, questions, cheers, cheers, happy, sad, angry, mad, 
put it below or go to my Discord. You can also go to my Twitch stream. That is linked below too.